Friends, 585 days of war. The people of Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson celebrated their first anniversary of joining Russian Federation since it was done exactly a year back in 2022. From the war zone on Zaporizhia front, intensity of attacks is still low. Ukraine is busy in rotation and re-strengthening, re-equipping its transferred brigades on the border. In Orokho sector, no changes towards Novo Prokopovka, Varboe and Tokmask. Isolated fights continuing in west of Varbov. In Rimivki salient, the intensity of attacks is pretty low by the Ukrainians. Similar situation as in Orekho sector prevails. However, Ukraine may soon start offensive at Pryotne and Novomyorsky direction. Towards south of Eurozone, Ukraine is on defensive. Breakthrough to Staromil, Novka is unlikely in near future. Ukrainian's activities towards Vasilivka and Pologi have increased. Seems that they wish to open a mini new front. In east on Bakhmut front in northwest, Uriko Vasilivka is under Russian army control now. The western part is still a grey zone. Ukraine is rebuilding offensive capabilities in Chasov Yar and Rai Alexandrovka. Counter attack is possible by them. In southwest Bakhmut, fight is on towards Klishivka, Andrivka, Kurdyumovka line. Kurdyumovka remains under Russian control. However, no changes on other fronts. Both sides have brought reserves and even PMC troops who are now part of Russian army are fighting here. As per ISW, the Ukrainians continued offensive near Bakhmut on 30th September, that is yesterday, but no advance. Also, Ukrainians effort to break through. Railway east of Kleshivka failed so far. ISW continues its report on Avdivka. The Russian offensive along Avdivka Donetsk city is continuing. In west of Marinka, the Russian army managed some minor gains. In north towards Kupyansk direction, no active battle in Sinkovka, Petropavlovka, Kislovka. It seems now Russians are busy in weakening. Ukrainians like hitting concentration points, warehouses, barracks and temporary deployment points, headquarters. In west of Swatovo, there have been no changes despite both sides carrying out limited ground offensive. Russian army has destroyed bridges all along Oskol river. Towards Kremenaya and Siversky Les. Ukrainians are building forces to intensify actions towards Kriminaya, which could also be used towards Soledar directions. At present, positional battle continuing in this area. ISW says that the Russian army conducted offensive operation near Kupians Krimina, but no advance. Ukrainians are continuing shelling in an effort to degrade Russian army's logistic line logistic supplies by hitting military target as well as civilian infrastructures while Russians are continuing moderate level strategic and operational bombing in Ukraine, in West and Central Ukraine as well. Yesterday they hit targets in Kalinova, Vinitsa, Nepropetrovsk, Odisha port, Vinitsa, using UAVs and missiles. Russian Ministry of Defense claims that more than 10,000 Ukrainians have surrendered since the beginning of the war and also that Ukrainians used chemical weapons or munitions in Gurlovka. There are reports that Russian Freedom Lism or Russian Volunteer Corps activities have increased in northeast of Ukraine after its May campaign in Bryansk, now again towards Bryansk, Belgorod and even towards Sumi region. British Defence Secretary has announced that it will send its troops to Ukraine, basically for training purpose, alongside 
more British defense firms will set up factories in Ukraine. It's an official announcement of sending NATO troops within Ukraine and the red line set up by Russia has crumbled. Slovakia's election results indicate that pro-Russian party is likely to come into power. That is, the new government will steer clear of NATO. I don't think so, but something akin to what Hungary has. It is very clear that the war is escalating. NATO is now totally into the war. Well, see you tomorrow, guys. Thank you.